My name is Kevin Ethan Levin. You killed my father. Prepare to die. And now it's time to pretend that Kevin's backstory makes sense again. Here we meet Ragnarok, the villain who allegedly murdered Kevin's dad and sends Kevin on a quest for vengeance. In Carsicon having a subdivision in the Null Void is an interesting development, as the realm has expanded into its own civilization as stated in Voided, so criminals can't just run around free anymore. Strange how Ragnarok is suddenly able to break free in a manner that appears he could have done the entire time he was locked up in the first place, and there's also just a random portal open too which doesn't make any sense. But the biggest thing about this episode is the revelation that Max was Kevin's dad's old partner, go figure. Which kind of throws the classic continuity through a loop if you think about it too hard. The Ragnarok thing I get, but I don't know why they had to have Max be a part of the story. Devin's story should have been independent from Max's past. Kevin somehow escapes the ship's explosion with zero explanation and is instantly on Earth too, which, bluntly speaking, is very stupid. We get to meet Kevin's mom, but it doesn't really feel that significant. Devin seemed pretty likable in my opinion. His voice is very charming, provided by Yoan Griffith, the original Mr. Fantastic, but his scene was fairly short. At least we got to see him use his powers in a similar way that classic Kevin used to do so. This was also really good for Kevin's development, and I actually like that he chooses to let Ragnarok die instead of saving him, showing that even though he's decided to fight for good, he's still not morally sound. He even low-key betrayed the Tennysons by trapping them in an escape pod. Half of Ben's aliens could have gone out of the escape pod easily and gone back to Ragnarok's ship if Ben really wanted to, so I like to believe that Ben allowed this to happen. Maybe Ben relates to the urge of wanting to kill his enemies as well. Ragnarok is just a generic villain for the sake of the episode, though. Although admittedly, Ragnarok has a nice design and separates him from a few of the other villains. I like that the key gets inserted directly into his head, too, but I'm kinda getting sick of how every single character seems to shoot energy beams now. Pretty great we get both of Ben's new aliens in this episode, although it's one of the rare instances that Wrath doesn't say his signature catchphrase. It would've been neat to see Max's flashback have the original plumber uniforms, but it's also cool to see Max at yet another younger time in his life. Some of the animation was alright, Right. Some looked pretty cheap, so it's a hit or miss with this one. Seeing Diamond Head redirect energy was pretty cool. It would have been great if he did that more, as aesthetically, he looks like a fusion between him and Chromastone, so it would make sense that he'd share similar powers as well. This episode is important because in Ultimate Alien, it adds a lot to Kevin's backstory and motivation for his ultimate arc at the end of Season 2, and adds to Omniverse's subversion of the story when the Rooter arc begins. This episode is also pretty entertaining because it leads you to believe you're learning more about Kevin's family, but with how much the story pulls things out of its ass, how it doesn't line up with classic Kevin, and eventually just gets retconned anyways. It's just a weird, but pretty fun ride. Not the worst of season three, but certainly not the best either. For your father. For my father.